Because I ran off techniques that I could throw on this model, I think it's time to push on and get this thing covered in dust. But just a little bit, because it's not an operational vehicle. Hey guys! Before we get to the main event, I need a moment to slightly tweak these markings. It was pointed out that they look too perfect for handwritten letters and it's true, so I decided to give them more texture. I'm just using diluted white paint to add tiny brush strokes on top of each letter. I admit, um, I made a mistake while airbrushing them. I should have sprayed them over a layer of chipping fluid which would make them look more distressed. Well, lesson for my future self. Then I added a few filters on top of them. These were painted in a random way, not as a uniform coat. This made the letters look more faded and I think the result looks quite okay. So now we have the entire model ready, every detail is painted and this includes the outer road wheels, idlers and sprockets, inner road wheels and suspension buggies. Let's just say I have accumulated a decent collection of dust and mud weathering products. I don't mean to flex, actually quite the opposite. I want to show you that you don't need all of this to weather your model. So instead I'm gonna keep things simple and use only two weathering products and one paint that I made myself. As always I think it's best to start with the lower hull because it's usually the most dusty and muddy part of the tank. And it's also mostly hidden behind the running gear, so if something goes wrong, it won't be such a huge deal. Just like with my previous models on this channel, I'm again gonna start with Wilder's Textured Earth. This is an acrylic product which dries into a flat finish with beautiful greedy texture. And I'm gonna apply it with this 000 AK brush which has seen better days. I decided to start where most mud would accumulate, aka on those suspension covers. These are actually visible on one historical photo of this tank and although it's hard to see, there is some mud in those places. Keep in mind that I'm applying the mud straight from the bottle. Now I have to clean the brush in tap water so I can blend the mud. With tap water. I think this step is very important because otherwise the mud would have very sharp edges and blending it like this just makes the effect look much more natural. Take a note how I'm dragging it upwards to simulate mud running down from the upper track. Let's now do a quick recap on the other side. I'd like to mention that I'm keeping all of the earth and mud effects very subtle on this model. First reason, I have a reference photo that shows where this tank was dirty and how much. And second, and this can be found on color pictures from modern tank scrapyards, in most cases the lower hull is the only place where large amounts of earth are present. Simply because rain will wash away most of them, except the lower hull which is partially shielded from the elements. And of course the third reason is that I simply don't want to cover all those neat rust spots and streaking effects which I tediously painted before. It's true that the product doesn't look like much while it's still wet, but when it dries up, uh, there are of course other places where dried mud would collect, like for example this idler or track tensioning wheel mount, and this part is gonna be hidden, but I don't like to cut corners, especially when the job only takes a few moments. Another obvious place is the inner side of the mud guard, and this will look especially awesome once I add the other effects. I also tend to add mud into those corners which are a feature of like every tank ever made, but here I'm adding it more sparingly and not along the entire length. Some places require more precision, so now I'm gonna take this Da Vinci which also used to be a nice brush but now it's quite pitiful and this is the only task it's good for. You might already notice that I'm mostly adding mud around places which I didn't really paint before, like this transmission cover which has no chipping or other effects, and that's because I knew from the beginning that this part will be covered with caked in mud, so I didn't waste time adding effects that will be hidden later. 
When you're adding mud to parts like this, I advise to always check how much space you have once the running gear is attached to the model. There is nothing worse than adding mud which is very hard to remove, only to find out you now cannot assemble the model. Yeah, that actually happened to me before. And let's quickly add some deposits on the swing arms as well. Note that I'm mostly adding mud in such a manner as if it fell from the upper track run. I'm just keeping the effect very subtle so no mud splashes or anything of that sort. Okay, so this step gave our model texture, let's now give it some color. I'm gonna use that homemade acrylic dust mixture I made from Tamiya paints a while ago. If you have no idea what this is, check this video. I made it specifically so I don't have to explain this stuff each time. One trick that I learned recently is to not shake the bottle because the paint will foam up. Instead stir the pigment at the bottom with a paintbrush. And then using the same brush you can transfer it into the palette. And I'll be using this round Tamiya brush for application. It's quite large so it'll hold a lot of paint. To start off I'll just repaint the mud. I want a completely dried up mud effect on this model, so that's why I chose that light colored texture dirt product. It has a similar color to my dust mixture, but it's not entirely identical, so I'll have to repaint it. It is very easy, because the mud will absorb the paint and it'll change color in no time. Okay, now it's time to create more delicate stuff. It's important to always remove the excess paint from the brush on a napkin, otherwise it'll be flooding the surface, which is something we don't want. What we actually want is to paint these nice vertical lines of streaking dust. This is the so-called rain marks technique. To break it down, I'm painting this diluted transparent acrylic dust mixture in multiple layers. The biggest difference between this and let's say enamel dust is that there's no blending involved. You simply brush the paint on your model, let it dry, add another layer, let it dry and so on. The reason why I don't need to blend this effect is because I'm slowly building it up with each layer. If you want a very light effect, about 5 layers are gonna be enough. If you want to create heavier layers of dust and mud, more than 10 layers will be necessary. I'm actually gonna count the layers while working on the upper surfaces just to give you a better idea. What's tricky about this type of weathering is the fact that the tank's base coat is very similar to the dust color. This applies to German yellow and desert tanks as well. In a situation like this you have to mix or use a pre-mixed dust color that's more grey, so it'll be clearly visible on this type of paint job. Here on the lower parts of the tank I wanted to create a heavier effect, but not too heavy to cover up all the previous stuff. It has to be just right. Something like this. Although the acrylic dust mixture is awesome, it's not a magic potion so it's not perfect for everything. For those tasks we have enamel paints. I'm actually using this heavy mud from ammo for the first time. It has almost the same color as the Rainmarks mixture and it's very thick, like a paste. But it can be thinned down into whatever consistency you like. Again, this is enamel paint, so use enamel white spirit. Turns out it's excellent for painting large opaque areas of mud. On this model I'm using it to touch up those parts which were hard to reach and paint with the acrylic dust. I simply brushed it on a specific location and then blended it with enamel thinner. It can be also diluted into an earth colored wash. This is another thing the acrylic dust isn't very good at. And I also used it on the fender to make the mud layer more opaque.
I think the lower hull is now pretty much finished. If this were an operational vehicle, I'd definitely add layers of damp and wet mud and also some leaking grease. But on this model I was following reference pictures of abandoned tanks which have this dry mud and dust build up all around their lower hulls and running gear. Speaking of running gear, it was treated the same way. I first applied the acrylic mud and I had to work in sections here before it started to dry up, so I applied the mud and blended it with water. Again very light amount, just like in the references and just so it doesn't cover all those precious chipping effects. The back wheel was clogged up with dry mud. Yeah, that's actually clearly visible on one of the historical photos of this tank and I think it's a pretty interesting effect if you ask me. So I did just that and then added some more texture the same way as on the sprocket. And now I just covered everything with the generous wash of the acrylic rain marks mixture. The road wheels needed a few extra steps but I'll discuss all of that in a separate video about painting wheels with rubber rims which will come out after this model is finished. By the way, there will be only two more videos with this model and I honestly can't wait to start a new project. Let's now move a little higher and add some dust to the upper hull. The application was exactly the same as on the lower hull, but I applied less layers because naturally there's usually less mud and dust in those areas. Plus this tank was exposed to rain which would wash most of it away. Let's now count those layers on the turret side plate. By the way, I'd also like to mention that you should gradually make the effect less visible as you move up. So the lower hull should receive the biggest amount of mud and dust and the turret the least. It's just the way it happens in real life. Yeah, of course, there are exceptions when the tank is completely covered in mud but that's like one out of a uh, hundred situations. Okay, so six layers will create this extremely faint dust effect which is all this model needs. I'll show you heavy weathering on German yellow once I start working on that Panther A. Painting dust on horizontal surfaces is much easier because you just have to stipple the paint in places where dust will naturally accumulate. Once you're done applying, wipe the brush clean and stipple again to spread the paint further. This is almost like blending. We can also go much heavier on horizontal plates because this is where dust just sits and it's harder to wash off. Those semi-horizontal plates like on the turret are a bit trickier. You sort of have to combine both methods in order to achieve a convincing result. So first you'll need to stipple the paint on the lowest parts, which will create an effect like this. And then you add some horizontal or vertical rain marks. And of course make sure the result is very faint, as this is the highest portion of the tank. Alright, seems like we're done for today. But you know what? I don't want to tease you any longer and I also want to see this model standing on its own legs. So how about we assemble the running gear? First I'll add the upper pulleys. These have a very loose fit and wobble all over the place so I'll have to fix them with super glue. Nice and straight. Let's now assemble the bogies. 
By the way, I didn't cut any corners on the road wheels and actually painted and weathered them from all sides. These have a pretty tight fit, so I don't need to glue them in place, which is cool because I'm still not sure if I won't need to disassemble the running gear for some unpredictable reason. Look at them. Just look at them. Let's put them on the model now! Now the sprockets. And... Idlers. These have a very tight fit, and I'm afraid I won't be able to remove them if I need to, so fingers crossed. Yeah! And... Done. Okay, 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 it's not totally done, but done as for now. We still need to paint the tracks, which by the way will be made into a tutorial about painting rusty tank tracks, so make sure you won't miss that. And then in the final episode of this series we'll put this model together by making those tiny final adjustments here and there. And then there will be that video about road wheels, but that will be more like me just talking about some theory and how they should and shouldn't be painted just blah blah blah, that kind of stuff. Anyway, I think the model is starting to look quite alright and I'm glad I went with this super light weathering. Nothing brutal. I just feel like it fits the theme of this model. Unfortunately, because the dust effects are so faint, I wasn't able to demonstrate the full potential of this technique, but that even wasn't the point of this video, because this is not a weathering tutorial, just a part of model series. And I'm starting to get off track, so I'm gonna leave you guys for now. So I hope you found this video helpful, or at least interesting to watch, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet, because I keep posting this type of content all the time. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you mates in the next one, and here's one interesting blooper. If this were an op- If this were an op- If this were an op- uh, <laughs> If this were an op- <laughs> If this were an op- 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 if this were an apparently <laughs> Apparation Yar If this were an appar <laughs> Operational If this were an appar <laughs> If this were an app <laughs> mm. <sighs> <laughs> If this were an operational vehicle, if this were an apar, <laughs> if this were an op, if this were an apar, <laughs> if this were an operational, if this were an apar, <laughs> if this were an operational vehicle, if this were an operational, if this were an, <laughs> if this were an operational vehicle, I definitely add layers of damp and wet mud to also. <laughs> Как с 5-минутовой блуфер.